Hey, Seth Miranda here for Adorama TV with the new Fujifilm 50 millimeter F1 autofocus. So that's kind of a big deal, right? F1.0, that is the shallow depth of field. We're talking about good in low light and some crazy bokeh. But that means that we have to find some special applications to kind of use this in. And we had it for a couple days. So the first thing I wanna do was, let's go low light. So inside Adorama, I realized that we had some broken monitors laying around. I mean, big 4K curved monitors with cracks in them. So before we chucked them, I said, let's use these as light sources. So we actually gripped them to some C-stands and we got our model Carolyn in there. We left our COVID masks on because it was a tight space, but it kind of worked for the shoot, right? We plugged Photoshop into each one of the monitors via two separate laptops and just ran different colors so we found something we liked. I went with the neon pink, the neon green, and we shoved some nan light tubes behind there with some really nice blue tones. So it gave this kind of like cyberpunk, sci-fi, dystopia feel, which is really cool. But we actually got to see what this thing acts like in low light settings with the autofocus at F1. So yeah, it's shallow aperture. That means shallow to the field, I should say, at a, a wide aperture. And that meant that I'm gonna be looking for those eyeballs. But this has eye autofocus. And because of that, it was kind of locking into it for me. Even in these low light situations, I was able to get really good shots based on you know shallow depth of field with the colors, which usually isn't the case for autofocus. If you have some wacky colors going on, it has a hard time seeing the different contrast and different things that you're trying to focus on. It has trouble. I didn't really see that too much with the X-T4 and this lens combined. So this all blacked out room was really low light situation. We weren't even using conventional light sources. We were using computer displays, which aren't meant to be high output. I mean, we're looking at them with our naked eyes and I'm meant to like melt our retinas out, right? But that also enabled me to really see what this thing acts like in such a low light setting, even with weird light sources. And because I'm able to open up to such a wide aperture of F1, that allowed for all that light to come in as much as it can. So it allowed me to get my ISO down to 160. I did mess around with a lot of settings and moving the lights and changing different things. And different colors of light will actually give you different exposures. So it was between ISO 160 and even up to 1000 for some of these shots. But I think we've got something really cool here. And I really think, when you're in a low light situation and you're able to go that wide open and you're able to step back even, you don't have to worry about such a shallow depth of field. So for event photography even, or something where you're in a low light where you're not really close to your subject, it isn't razor thin depth of field. It just gives you the ability to use the most amount of the light in that environment. All right, so let's talk about the lens itself. It's weighing in at 1.86 pounds, so it's just under two pounds. It doesn't feel that crazy, but you would expect it to be a pretty large lens when you hear F1, right? Because that usually means it has a large front element, but it's kind of not. We're looking at 77 millimeter thread size for the filter, which is kind of the normal size for a zoom lens in full frame. It doesn't feel too front heavy to me, but it does feel really well built. We have the tangible Fujifilm fun stuff, like the aperture ring, and the focus is really smooth. I'm really digging that. And one of the things that we noticed was has a concave front element. I don't know if this actually does anything, but I can tell you that in the low light situation, when we had light sources pointed right at my lens, I had very subtle flaring, not like something crazy blitzing through the lens like you normally would when you're really wide open like that. So at 50 millimeters, uh, Fujifilm is saying that on the sensor size for the X-T4, which is APS-C, you're looking at about a 76 millimeter equivalency when you're looking at full frame, which is great. So that's kind of a really nice portrait lens. And we did the really weird low light stuff, crazy colors, sci-fi, whatever. But now it's time to see what this thing can do for practical applications, something most people would use it for. So me and Caroline went outside, we went some natural light. I had to bring a reflector and a diffuser just to play some games and you know refine that light on Caroline, which is great. She had those punchy, sapphire blue eyes. Some nice uh, deflector from Lastolight actually gave me a little bit of silver specular kick from the silver while giving me a nice diffused white bounce right into the shadows in her face to give me this nice, really even, clean light. And I shot everything from F1 all the way to F8 just to see how it changes as far as the bokeh goes or bokeh, I don't care how you say it, you know what I'm talking about. And you can actually see the quality of this lens and see what kind of images you're gonna get when you go through the aperture settings. Really nice stuff, really easy, right? Small kit, lens body and a reflector and I'm good to go. But what you have to realize also is color doesn't just exist inside the camera and the light source. There's color space inside the glass of the lens and I think we can really see here the fidelity of that color in these shots in some nice shade, in some nice diffused light using a two-stop diffuser. 
So we couldn't just stop at stills. We had to try this thing out for video. So I handed it over to Fernando. You're looking at the footage right now with I autofocus on at F1. So you can see for yourself. Remember, this isn't final firmware either. So it can only get better from here as they update the firmware for final launch. And that means we're just gonna get more accurate, faster, and a more responsive lens. All right, so that's gonna do it for me here with the Fujifilm 50 millimeter F1 autofocus lens. If you have any questions for me about my experience using this, Hit me with a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Don't forget to like, subscribe. We're almost at a million subscribers and thank you guys so much for being part of that. And don't forget to share this video around if you know anybody that's looking for a really shallow depth of field bokeh monster lens. And I'll see you guys next time. Later.